Philip, Philip Boyle. Philip's our coordinator of Docomomo, and his talks are always thrilling. They are loaded with detail and analysis, but always brimming with atmosphere and uh, effectively uh, uh, brought to life with a whole host of really fascinating anecdotes. Philip. Oh, gosh, that's a, that's a good uh, uh, start off. Um, Mies van der Rohe, um, we don't have any Mies van der Rohe buildings in, in Britain. Um, he's widely studied and written about, and um, it's, it's, I, I, I approach this rather with trepidation, but I'm going to talk just about two houses, the house Langer and Esther's, which were built at the same time in Kreufeld, uh, in Germany, near the Dutch border, border, border between 27 and 1930. Um, right towards the end of his life, uh, I've got here a quote from a talk at the AA that Mies gave in 1959, um, when asked about these houses, um, and I'll read it out. Um, I wanted to make this house, House Langer, much more glass, but the client didn't like that. I had great trouble. Um, well, do any of us who, um, as, as architects, so I was an architect as much as a historian, um, have, have uh, had clients with houses, trouble can mean uh, any, any, any number of, number of things. Um, so before we get to the two houses, I just wanted to briefly locate them in, in the sequence of, of, of Mises' career, um, half in Germany and half uh, in America. Um, the two houses I'm going to talk about were in the early 30s. It was in 1938 that he emigrated um, to, to uh, America. Before that, just to, to remind you, um, born in 1886, um, his origin was his father was a stonemason. So he comes to architecture through making and building things, um, uh, and then through working in various offices. The critical thing probably in, in, in his progress was working with Peter Behrens and the Deutsche Werkbund uh, uh, just after the turn of the century. Um, uh, uh, after that, and the, the World War I, in the early 1920s, um, he did some absolutely remarkable um, abstract sort of works, you call it. He did a, a, a skyscraper, which was in, in glass. He did an office building in concrete, another house in concrete, and a house in brick. And they were theoretical projects, which he published in the magazine G. And they were all probably at that moment in time quite unbuildable. They, they were extremely uh, abstract and came from specifically inventions in the use of the materials, glass, brick, concrete, steel. Um, uh, after, uh, he then became involved with the other groups in Germany that progressed it through the 1920s, the November group and the ring, which is the more famous one of the people who actually built uh, a, a lot of things. Um, his first actual making of things in, in, in brick was this monument following the, the failed push by uh, Rosen Luxemburg and it, I, I don't think I can pronounce it properly. Um, anyway, uh, uh, in the early 1920s, he, he, he designed this monument that was built. You can see a picture of it there in extremely uh, robust, um, robust brickwork. Um, uh, and after that, uh, well, uh, well, well the, the latter part of his career was, was, was in America. Uh, and I won't, I will go into detail at, at, at the end of this, but not, not before then. But in these two images, you can see the, the monument for Liebig and Rosa Luxemburg and him being driven by his daughter uh, in, the mid, in, in the Midwest. Um, to come back to the two houses in 1936, 37, I'm going to talk a bit about, um, this is a picture of, of, of them both at that time, looking very austere, very cubic, but not in glass or concrete, but in brick and not at all like the brick house, uh, which I'll show you that he did it theoretically in, in, in G. Uh, and these two houses, which are fairly similar, uh, came about because of these, the, the two clients. Um, Hermann Langer was uh, the main moving light in, in the textile industry in, in, in Germany, and Joseph Esters was worked with him in the various firms and things that he did. Uh, and so they worked and lived together in these two houses that came side by side. Um, I'm showing you here on, on the left, uh, 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 Hermann Langer and Joseph Esters. 
uh, and then Hermannanger again at the bottom, a more close up view, and also a picture of uh, Lili Reich. Lili Reich at this early time in the 20s was in partnership with, with, with uh, Mies, um, and uh, her, her work mainly revolved around interiors. And she did some extraordinary things with uh, for promotional uh, pavilions for the, the, the silk industry. And it's there that she met um, Langer and Estes because of their involvement in, in the silk industry. That isn't necessarily, it's not proved that that's the reason why uh, he came to Mies or her for the house. It, 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 it's a suggested one. The history books are not clear, clear on that. Anyway, uh, to, to go on a bit more in, into these clients, because I'd, I'd like to explain the clients before we get to the houses, because it, the, the relationship is part of what brings them about. Here again, the one on the, on the left here is Herman Langer uh, uh, in front of his house, uh, and the one on the right with a man with a uh, squeeze box uh, is inside his house, uh, of the Estes house, Joseph Estes with his daughter. Um, I'll tell you a bit about Herman Langer. Um, his father was a silk manufacturer and founded several silk uh, mills, which uh, were set up in Kruijfeld near the Dutch border. Um, at the time of the uh, First World War, um, he was involved in, 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 in all the sort of uniforms and clothing that had to go on with the war, war effort. By 1918, in his 40s, he'd become head of the textile section of the finance ministry in Germany. So he'd, 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 he'd advanced into a very important position in terms of, of, of power in Germany. And he was responsible uh, when peace came uh, for the conversion of the textile industry from making uniforms <laughs> in, in, in making all the other things that we did. So he, he had a very large uh, responsibility in, in, in the textile industry. Um, Esther's was a board member of his, his, his uh, firm, uh, and they, they, they ran this big firm, United Silk Weaving Firms. In addition to that, Langer, from quite early on, had been uh, involved with the Deutsche Werkbund, which was um, promoted industrial design uh, uh, in, in Germany at, at that time. And, and, and he was a major collector of art from 1912 onwards. And showing here a list of the, he had over 300 works he'd collected. And you can see there, they were by Picasso, Gris, Braque, um, de Chirico, Kandinsky, Dix, Kirchner. I'm saying those names because they're the sort of people who when in 1933, when Hitler had his uh, famous exhibition where of, of decadent, uh, inadmissible art. A lot of those people were there. So Hermann Engel was an important person in Germany who was also important, uh, involved in modern art uh, and, 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 the, and in the ring and the various groups and in fact the architects. Uh, as early as 1925 he'd wanted to have a house designed for himself by Theo van Doesberg and, and Carl van Esten after the De Stil exhibition that was in the early 20s. So he related art and architecture and the modern movement. He, he was involved in those things. And I think it's important to stress that as we go through the, uh, the house and how it was designed and how it came about. Um, uh, uh, the, to go back to the, the quote uh, that the client didn't want a glass house, this is me doing a drawing, trying to convince him he should have gla a glass house, which didn't succeed. It's, it's not a particularly good drawing, so I'm not showing you the actual drawing. I'm just showing you him drawing it. Um, but just to remind you of, 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 of Van Doesberg and, and Mies, that, 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 that the, the, the progression of the still and the work that was done by the people in the G group well, Link, the, the, the one on the left is Mises' brick house, and you, you can see there the, the, the breaking down in space flowing through um, what looked like arbitrary brick walls, but they're actually quite purposeful ones. The, 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 they were linked. So, so uh, Langer, Van Doesberg, Mies van der Rohe were immersed in, 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 in modernism uh, in the early 1920s. So uh, I've got here a sort of collection of things of Mies, which is uh, the, the two houses are, are here and the Roosevelt Suburban Memorial, um, the Afghanistan social housing that he did, uh, and then the, 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 the big exhibition in Stuttgart, of, of where, where all, a lot of modern architects came together to do various forms of housing, but Mies was responsible for the overall control. And this one up here is the Wolf House, which is a house in uh, late 1920s, before these two, that was also designed in brick, but was very dissimilar to the ones I'm going to talk to you about because it was on a slope. Out, and it was destroyed in World War II, so it didn't go on existing. Um, the, the sort of things, uh, space through freedom, this is really the Barcelona Pavilion and the Villa Tugendat, where, like in the 
the theoretical G brick house space expanded through through structures and out. And this one on the end here was a silk exhibition. And that's just the sort of images of those famous buildings, which I think people are fairly familiar with. Um, uh, at the same time, in, in, in housing, um, he's, he, he explored courthouses quite a lot. He did a number of exercises where you would have an area within which you could dispose of space in different ways within a tight sort of courtyard area. And he examined these more sort of drawings that he did um, to, to break them down. Um, and I'm just showing you some of those. Two things I want to point out particularly here, um, this drawing, which you might not be able to read very well, but this is for a house uh, from uh, later than the one that I'm going to eventually get to, um, uh, for uh, a woman called Mrs. Rezor in, in America in 1938, when he was going to move over there. It shows a steel frame house sitting on one side on land with a river running underneath it and supported by a freestanding column on the other end. It, it's, a, it's an image which caught a lot of people in America. This bottom picture here is also a drawing done for that same house from Mrs. Rezor uh, with the, the river and an independent structure and the completely a space flowing out, out from it. Um, this house never got built, but Mrs. Rezor was married to J. Walter Thompson, who ran the largest and most wealthy uh, advertising agency in New York at that time. And, and it was on the offer of designing this house that Mies went to America in 1938. And she put him up for six weeks in the uh, university club in, 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 in New York, uh, a McKim Mead and White building, uh, which is a very fine American Beaux-Arts building. So Mies had his first impression, his first, if you like, uh, direct experience of, of American architecture was McKim Meadenwright's University Club. And when he came to do the Seagram building, I want to come back and show you that that initial thing has an effect on how the Seagram wanted out. Anyway, that, that's not to do with, and again, the houses I'm going to talk about. And naturally, the, the, the more famous that everybody will know, the IIT, the uh, steel frame with infield in brick uh, that he did in the 1940s. Uh, the steel work and the brick were removed uh, from, were clearly, uh, related to each other with these sort of Palladian proportions that, 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 that are well known. Um, right, the, the, the brick, the, the, on the left here, we've got a blow up of, of a part of the original brick house from the G in, in 1923. And on the right, Werner Blazer in, in drawing up this house, attempted to do the, the, the brick bonding for it, which didn't quite fit and didn't quite work. It was, it was theoretical and not thought through. When you applied the, the logic of how you build in brick, it didn't quite get there. Um, this is uh, pictures of the columns in the Barcelona pavilion. The one on the left is actually how it was built. The one on the right is, is how, again, it was for many, many years, it, it was thought that was how it was constructed before. Four big angles, the chrome round the outside, but the, but, the, but the sizes and shapes of them um, were not very well known. And again, the other mysterious thing about the Barcelona Pavilion, which I'm showing you here in plan section and a photo of it. If, if you notice the, the photo, the classic photo of it, the, 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 the edge of the roof is, is, is very, very thin. But if you look at the top drawing, you can see the section through the roof, but that thin part only applies to the edges that you can see behind where the columns were holding up the main of the roof, there were two bloody great sections running across, the sort of thing that Frank the Wright did in the Roby house, you know, with these great big beams, but, but you didn't actually see them because they're hidden in the roof. Um, uh, and when it was reconstructed in 1986, I think steel uh, design, engineering design had, had, had moved on a bit. So um, the, in, in terms of, um, uh, just a reminder again of, 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 of the flash of gleam you get by those sort of columns that's in the Tugendhat house and that, 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 that you get light reflected in this way, it gets abstracted back. So his drawings, he really liked in G for um, uh, re re reflections. Right, I'm going to, at long last, I'm getting to the subject of this tonight talk, which is the two houses. Um, I'm going to now show you, uh, uh, this is a, a plan of the Langer House, ground floor plan. Um, this is not how it was built. Um, this, I'm going to show you now a quote from Christina Lang, a uh, film quote, who is the great granddaughter of Herman Lang, the client for the house, uh, describing the relationship between um, uh, Mies and, and her great grandfather. This picture here shows the middle of his house very open, and that's to do with what she's about to say now. Ich habe mich gefragt, warum wollte Lange das nicht? Er war ja ein sehr offener Mensch, der Avantgarde absolut zugeneigter Mensch. Also warum wollte er das nicht, dieses Avantgarde-Konzept gewissermaßen realisieren? 
Er war in den 50ern, er war, äh, ich denke, dass es daran gelegen hat, er war in den 50ern, er war sehr sozusagen gesellschaftlich, beruflich, familiär etabliert. Er hatte auch sehr viele gesellschaftliche Verpflichtungen. Er hatte drei Kinder, die waren zwar nicht mehr ganz jung, aber äh, ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass es einfach seinem Lebens Fluss, seinem Alltag, seinem ganz normalen Ablauf im Tag nicht entgegengekommen wäre, so offen zu leben, wie Mies sich das noch vorgestellt hat. Und von daher waren die Räume im Haus lange eigentlich ordentlich geschlossen. Ich weiß, dass die Mutter des Hauses hatte das Zimmer der Dame, da befand sie sich. Dann gab es das Zimmer dahinter, was heute mit dem Arbeitszimmer verschmolzen ist zu einem. Das war eigentlich der Hauptfamilienraum, während die Halle vorne weitgehend für Teebesuche und so etwas genutzt wurde. Da wurde dann ein Tisch reingetragen, dann hat man mit den Gästen dort Tee getrunken, dann wurde der Tisch wieder rausgetragen und die Gäste gingen. Das war also sehr viel offizieller da vorne, als man heute denkt, man würde heute meinen, das ist ein Wohnraum gewesen. Es war mehr so eine Art Empfangshalle. Right, and I'm now going to share another quote uh, from the, uh, by the restoration architect, uh, Klaus Reimann, who, uh, the, the, the houses, uh, one of them was damaged in the war, not very badly, the windows were blown out, but the main structure stayed there, but, but there were considerable Uh, structural problem it, and he's going to describe what they were. Der Baukörper als solcher war konstruiert auf einem Rost von äh, tragenden Pfeilern, die in den Untergrund gelassen worden sind. Erst darauf ist ein Fundamentrost gemacht worden und dann erst kam der Keller. Sie können sich also vorstellen, dass das richtig viel Geld gekostet hat damals. Und die ganze Konstruktion war schon damals aufgelöst in Stahlkonstruktionen. Also auch die Decke über dem Keller schon ist aus Stahlträgern konstruiert, also aufgelöst im Sinne äh, beispielsweise des Barcelona Pavillons. Und diese Stahlkonstruktion, die ist auch hier drin. Also alle Deckenkonstruktionen sind aus Stahl. Um, yes, uh, here I'm, going to sh I'm showing you now a, a, a section through a wall. You can see that we've got very thick brick walls with facing bricks on the outside. Um, and you can see this is a, a typical opening in both of these houses. Uh, and then, then above there are three beams to hold a load of the stuff above that. And then the, the floors, uh, the bricks themselves were rather overfired. They're very beautiful bricks, um, rather overfired. So they came out in, uh, that you'd get a range of sizes of them. And this is a house with very thick walls, built with a steel frame, with large, large openings, large windows. They, they don't, the, 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 there's always brick walls with an a hole in it for the window. But, but um, uh, you can see here, there's, there's a working drawing right of, of the windows and the dimensions <laughs> for setting out the, 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 the brick openings. It, it is a basement and then two floors for a house and uh, a lot of dimensions. I mean, when it started on site, Uh, there was a phone call and there was a meeting on site and uh, things got sorted out. But um, just to tell you, um, that, that's how they were built. This is a, a rather bad drawing, showing the two houses sitting on their plots, what they were like, but this is a bit clearer. On the left, the black and white photo, the Esther's house on the left, Langer house on the right, you can see that it's, it's a suburban area that when they were built, the area was fairly open, but the, the aerial view on the right hand side shows how um, the landscaping has grown up on the road and, and how it's got more, much more dense. Um, uh, but they had quite large gardens. And um, there's, the, there's the two of them, you see, with equal area gardens and equal area um, houses. Um, you could see, uh, I, I won't go into great detail, but you can see, if I can get my arrow to work. Oh, right, that's right. Um, the, the, the basically, um, they're L-shaped. That this end of the house, houses, both of them, this end is basically kitchen and service part at ground floor level. That you enter them. There are two entrances. They're large, large pillars. So there's a servants' entrance which is round this side, and there's a main entrance that goes in the corner here. And that similar thing on the other one. Only there are two doors side by side fogging in. So you have, you have a, a reception area within that bit there. And then you have a, an area in the middle here, which is basically a sort of reception room in both of them. An area which is reception room. And then you can see there are smaller spaces scattered around. This one would be a dining room. And then there are three smaller rooms, which are social rooms of different sorts. A woman's room, uh, Uh, a, a man's room and a sort of shared room. Uh, in one house, one of these was used in the nursery and the other it wasn't. The same, had different shapes, same organization, a dining area, 
um, a retiring a woman's room, um, a, a man's retiring room, uh, and, and a shared sort of um, uh, withdrawing room. So they're quite lavish on the ground floor, and you could see the, the gardens stretch out. Uh, and this is this is Herr Langer with his family. I think you showed it. Uh, Christina showed a, a view of this in the in, in the crowded together in that small woman's room, which we'll see some more about in a, in, in, a, in a minute. Um, this is the Langer house itself, both levels, all right? So I've already described a bit the ground floor, which is this level here, and this is the upper floor here. If we go on to the, you know, the, the, the lower floor, the, the ground slopes down, and you get a garage that slots underneath, um, and you get ventilation to it. There's a basement area, I'm going to show you in a minute, that's ventilated here. Um, the upper level, uh, you go up a staircase in the entrance, um, uh, and the 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 the... the, the um, uh, Herman and his wife, they, have, they each have their own, own, their own bedroom and their own bathroom with a lobby in between. Um, this part here is, is, is for guests. And then three children, each of their children has its own bathroom. Uh, there, there is a terrace which they uh, accessible from there and also a terrace here for the children there. So it's quite, quite lavish. And you can see here in the elevations, rather than one guy should have mentioned, that, that the lower floor rooms are quite large openings and the upper ones are, 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 are smaller. Um, in section, there's this large basement that the man described uh, uh, and, and underneath. Um, the, the, the main, the ceiling height of the main floor is quite high and the doors run the full way up. So the doors in the, in, in the, in the shared room to, spaces are big and on the bedroom level it, it, it's less and there's room here for all this structure um, in between. Um, back to the Langhouse ground floor plan. Um, things to point out here is that there are quite large structural walls in between with these steel concrete. Some of the walls are shared, there are built-in built in fittings, that's a bookcase that's built in there uh, and there's a part here where there's a wall built in with um, bookcases between those two. Um, uh, I'll, 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 I'll move on. I'm going to go back to the basement. The basement is extraordinary, you see, the, the, underneath this two-story house, there is all this space. I mean, this, this over here is, is car parking, um, uh, kitchen and servants areas. Um, in these rooms here, the, 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 the underneath the windows there, the, these are, uh, that's a motor for it, so that you could lower the window into the basement and have, like in the Tugendat house, you, you could have um, the windows fully resist to the space. Those main rooms facing onto the garden could be opened all the way down. That's there on the drawing, but it was never built that way. Um, they obviously, Langer put his foot down and didn't want that. Didn't want that. But to show you the degree of, 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 of if you like, putting together a material stuff, this is in, in, in the boiler room, you know, the way the pipes put together on the, these great thick walls underneath. Uh, in the bedroom, bedroom level, these, these bathrooms are again described outside of the children running along and the terraces that, 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 that run out. Um, I'm going to show you a photo of this area here, where these two bathrooms, this lobby, these two bedrooms come together with their doors, one, two, three, four, five, um, and there we are, there's, there's, a, there's a piece of news for you, um, which you get later on and things, how, 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 how that's a bit an arbitrary for a corner. Um, okay, um, uh, I'm now going to show you um, uh, the restoration architect taught, this is the, the corridor of the Langer House, and he's going to describe some of the things that went on there. Das ist eine ganz hochqualitative Bauweise. Das betrifft natürlich auch die Fenster, die gewollt so schmalrahmig aufgebaut sind. Nicht? Es gibt die, die Fenster beispielsweise auch in Holz. Und dann hat Herr Mies mit Herrn Lange in Düsseldorf die Firma Finestra Kretal aufgetan und hat diese Konstruktion eben noch viel strenger und in Industrieprofilen äh, designt oder gezeichnet und hat die dann so ausgeführt. Das sind die eleganten Fenster. Ne? Uh, this is a drawing from, from a book. It's quite a quite good book on both these villas by um, Kent Kleinman and Leslie Van Duzer. What they've done is they've taken all three floors that I've been describing to you and, and have laid them, as, as we can with tracing paper, all on top of each other. And, and you realize that the parts that are shaded in red are the only places where you, the, the, the structure goes right through vertically. So in other words, at each toilet level, you've got beams that are sitting on other ones. In bed. So, so it's extremely complicated in the way that the, the, the steel work here uh, is integrated or related to the, to the thicker, thicker brick walls. 
Um, now to go on and describe them in a bit more detail. Uh, this is a view uh, uh, with the Langer House uh, car entrance to the right and the street entrance to the Estes House to the left. With uh, This is when I went and visited them a few uh, uh, years ago. But they are now both uh, art galleries. They're, they're no longer a, a, the families living in either. Um, uh, they're both used as art galleries. And as we will go through the houses, uh, that's uh, a view of the corner of the cover going down and where the light, the horizontal white line is, that's the lobby over the two entrances, the servants and the, the main one uh, in that's getting near that entrance. You see, you can see here again that this, this industrial brick that's used is, is, is um, extremely hard, extremely shiny, red uh, and, and unforgiving. <laughs> Um, in, in its surface. There are no arches over the openings. It, it is there as a plane. It, 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 is, it is abstracted. Um, so, uh, and, and that, that, that may, may, be, may be very obvious, but the, 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 the language that's going on here is, is, is quite a struggle. Um, that's the reverse side of the Langer House. Um, uh, you can see the color in this sort of light. I'm gonna show you lots of photos in different sort of conditions. So you can see that in the color, the, the brick's gone quite dark. In relation to the green, uh, as you step back from these houses, now the same same view, the the, the greenery above. Um, uh, if, if you imagine there was a pitched roof on top of this, it'd be quite a different sort of character. Um, the character comes from the size of the openings uh, and the size of the material of of, of, of the walls. Um, the next photo is a less glamorous picture of the same thing, with the shutters down on the side, with, with, near the house next door. Um, this coming up to it at the end, what you're seeing there is the children's bedroom on the first floor, gets its little balcony tucked away on the corner. It's quite a discreet little place, you know, within a, a large house, you know, facing on a sunny day. It, 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 and, and, and in the last photo, I'll show you how it's quite near the one next door, but it's a gable end, um, a, a, a little balcony out, that stepping back a bit from it. Um, that looking at on the end, now you've got both levels there on the lower, and now these are both used as, as galleries uh, where you're looking through. If we look at the plan, just to the side, if I get my arrow out, um, we're, 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 we're at the end here looking at this terrace and this room on the end here. Um, originally, there was a, um, a, a built in play piece here, um, and that's come out, so the space is now flow for it being a gallery rather, rather, rather than a house, but it's terrace outside. Um, there you can see it being used as a gallery with these big windows uh, and the areas in front where there might have been the things to, to lower the glass through if they'd gone on and done that. Um, this shows it a bit clearer actually, but uh, that, if we're looking at this photo here, where that wall is there is that wall there, right? So originally that was closed off there with a, um, a bookcase, chest of drawers. It was, it was all, all, all wall um, when there were separate rooms. Now that, that's just been shifted. So the spaces now, now flow. We're going to go inside now. We're going to go into this room, which is the reception room of the Langer House. And we're looking back 180 degrees from where we were before. So the rooms we saw before are through there and through there and through that door. Uh, and in this, um, it's sort of rather sparse, it's not been used for anything much, is it? Uh, original things are this bookcase completely built in to the brick wall there and the radiators built into the thick brick walls here with the deep hills. Um, you get the two doors that are going, going through and even more bold drawing of a bold picture, okay, of, of the same space. I'm now going to show you it uh, as it was when Langer uh, lived in it. Where you see the curtain here, uh, this used to be cupboard for putting things away. But when this was used as a reception room, you can see um, it's a large, large space. It's for, it's for guests coming in and for socializing, for showing off his art collection. And you can see some of it was mounted like this and some of it mounted on the walls. Uh, so that really is the reason for the things like the radiators uh, and the bookcases are, are, are sort of negative. So as a space, it was a space for displaying this sort of art um, to, to, to people at, at, um, at, at, at that, that time. Uh, a closer view of, of where that bookcase is. And if you want to see what is on plan, it's there. This, this wall here uh, has that, that built-in um, 
bookcase going back, a reverse view of the same room. So if you were visiting the house, you, there are the glazed doors at the entrance where you come in and, and you, do, you, 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 you come in through these doors. To the right here is the dining room. You can see here again in this, the, the, light, the large windows and, 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 and the sort of silk curtains that they use on this in diffusing light. Uh, um, it, 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 it's quite a, a subtle um, arrangement, showing that a bit bigger. The in wall, so we, we were looking at the entrance here from inside it back from that view. Well, the earlier views were the two doors would have been there, whoops, and there. Um, uh, on this plan, uh, this is the dining room, which goes on and leads out to the terraces to the rear, a paved one and, and a grass one. Uh, this is the small woman's room. We saw the people huddled together against this wall here. Um, this is um, the, uh, it, 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 I think it's called the men's room. Anyway, I'm not quite so clear how these two rooms were used, but um, in this, this is a drawing from 1942 of those two rooms uh, done by Lily Reich, because at that time this was in America, but she was still, you know, so she advised him, I think this is a year before Langer died. So this, this room has been turned in, I think, into a sort of home office. Which is, I think she's suggesting how he could use it there. But you can see that the, 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 the main reception room was there divided into two sort of areas where you've got, and probably in, in wartime, uh, they were there much of the time and, and, and there'd be much more varied use of these spaces. But um, it shows the degree, uh, I'm showing this stuff in the because you can see the, the thick walls and the way the fittings are done and the way the spaces relate um, is quite, I think it's quite subtle. Um, anyway, so we're, we're going on around the outside. This is as a gallery again with that, this wall, which has been removed. So it's now a gallery. So the spaces flow through uh, and details of the brickwork outside on the terrace there, a little plinth, a plinth in which there would have been, been a sculpture and a close up of the brickwork in English bond all right, headers and stretches. So behind that, the, the plain brickwork, which is bonding to, um, it must have been a bricklayer's nightmare, um, views through. Again, you can see the way that the, the walls are flattened, that they are more abstracted, and the way the windows are detailed um, is, is, is quite modern. Um, through, um, I just walked down it. Now, the roller shutters that slide down in these things and, and kept, kept, kept it together. The, 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 those roller shutters go up into above those windows and we'll see how all that works in a minute. Um, roller shutters up, uh, the terrace at the end. Um, this is the, the, the woman's room, the small, rather intimate room um, with an original light fitting. Um, this is how it was originally. So uh, again, it, 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 uh, I, I actually, I think the relationship between the display uh, and the sitting here in quite a small intimate space. We measured it's quite a big, big, this side is quite a big garden out here. One picture asymmetrical on, on the wall, um, a sculpture on its own there. And this case, which again is built into the wall here, this display case for smaller things, and then a lower level shelf. Um, the furniture itself, this, this sort of chair, that's a mise, mise these, these tables are a mise, I don't know about the sofa. Um, and this is a det detail of that, that thing built in the wall. And to hold that damn thing there is to here, right, this great RSJ that's built into the brick, brick, brick wall. Then the joinery of that display case is slotted into that thing. That's really sort of well made. So the whole, the, the, the detailing, um, uh, you can see here in, in, in bigger ones, they might have stood down these windows, but they didn't, it's beautifully done and open. This is in the dining room between the, on plan. We're looking at a partition here from this side. So it's a beautiful veneer that's used that folds away for a dining room there. Quite, quite a small space. And the, the light fittings throughout here, these round ones are the ones that were originally used. There's the original thing of that, that dining space with, again, that, that they obviously didn't move those doors very much because they've hung what looks like a chagall or something on the, on the, on the wall there. But that, 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 that's, di that's Langer uh, dining sideboard, but the arts to the fore. Uh, and so is the architecture, I would suggest. Um, uh, the kitchen, a German kitchen from the 1930s. Um, uh, the, the, again, the, the other side of that partition with a, a picture on it, the dining room is behind that, that, that wall there. And this is the, the, the lobby going through from this big reception room to the garden behind. So you get an idea of the light that filters through the height and width of these things. I've shown you that one before, and I've shown you that one before. 
Um, this is upstairs, the passage which is shown in the short film uh, to the children's room, uh, the terrace below. Um, again, the precision of, of, of the brickwork uh, and the composition of what was probably a seat to sit on and a, and a little plinth uh, for a, a, a statue to that the brickwork looking again quite different in this sort of light. Um, the more you look at it in the, the, the different light, you, you it's coming up. Again, the colors and the textures uh, and a single column um, heat. Uh, the terrace above um, for the, the, the parents' bedroom. We're now at this end looking at this terrace here with the bedroom. That, that's, that's, that's the ground floor, sorry, but the bedroom above it. Yeah, that's the parent room. Uh, and step down into the garden, away into the garden, uh, even further into the garden. So you can see there that the way these fit into these quite dark, that, that, you, that you're on a, a plinth uh, with the garden opening out beyond. Um, this is, again, that garden turning down to the, this is that flight of steps there where you, you've come down from a terrace. Uh, the, the detailing with these bricks and the colours that you get um, into the courtyard where you turn and go into the garages and to the this is the sort of end of this is the end of the Langer house and this is the Esther house here so they're, 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 the, the fact of changing the levels here makes for the privacy between them to be difficult uh, another somebody else's photo of what how the brickwork can come out in another form of light um, on, in that, that courtyard on um, back to the front of that courtyard, and we'll go on to the, the Estes House right end of it, um, a view of the Estes House from the Langer House, um, further back into the gardens, showing how uh, in between the two, that it's quite gentle, the, 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 the transition between them, when you've got a pair of houses. And pairs of houses are really interesting, like, like the uh, Jowl houses by Corb, um, when you get two together, side view of the Estes House. Um, the internal planning of this is different from uh, the other one. The, I explained about the dining room. The bedrooms are very different see, on the, the upper level. Um, so on an echelon, children all in a row. The bathroom's separate, not so many bathrooms, not so many links, but, but basically similar. Um, downstairs, um, the middle room, let's get my arrow right. You can see the lobby to the guard. Uh, can't point at things too well, but the dining room on the left, the three rooms around the outside and the main sort of reception, it's the same organization, but different sizes from the Langer house. Uh, again, the basement area with all its mount magnificent equipment, um, the bedrooms for the children running along, um, the thickness of the floors and the window sizes. Again, this is the equivalent drawing, uh, showing the three levels put together, only a small bit where the walls go through vertically the frames, rear view, sight light from the inside. Uh, again, same view, but further back in the garden with the trees going up and the, 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 the proportions and the size and the shapes and the form of the house. Um, in the, it's got sculpture now in the, in the garden. Um, a less flattering view, um, closer up view of the, of the Esther's house the light around it. Uh, internally, looking back from the Estes house at the Langer house, again, it, it, you, you can sort of see but the, 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 the distances that they are apart. In this, the, the rooms link more, they're, they're simpler than in the Langer one, but they do link through. So they're now used for galleries and for uh, display art. Um, you can see here how they, they, they flow, flow through and the, the way they're put together. Um, a view down the outside, um, a view of the thing that, that we, where you would have had, but if it had been vertical sliding minis, how you get to do the gear for that. Um, uh, outside the dining area is, is, is the, I think, the more interesting part of this house. Um, uh, you have, that's the woman's room and one of the small living rooms and the terrace with the bedroom set back above. This is the terrace you come out to from the, 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 the dining room with the Langer house in the distance. Um, that's from the distance, looking back at it, uh, the balcony is quite small actually on top, but uh, the, this, this terrace has a sort of glazed end to it here, single column hold, holding it up. It looks a bit, here it's quite neutral, but um, if you imagine it, that's that space being used by the Estes 
family and friends. You can see the column there with a the man peering around it. You can see, just about see where that glazed screen is there, which is rather anonymous in fact here, but in that sort of special occasion, it, it, you know, filtering out into garden, that was how it was, was used. That's, those people would have been looking at that um, the column in the garden. That's a view back into the lobby, into the house from this terrace and beyond, you can see the rooms linking through, which again is, is, is a very subtle, uh, what you've got there is a lobby to the dining area and beyond that, the rooms that are now used for, 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 for exhibition. That's a more orthodox, less reflecting view, of exactly the same door and exactly the same spaces. It's in plan, we are looking, I'm sorry, I have lost my arrow. Oh, here we are, good. Um, we're, we're looking at this terrace here and we're looking through this door here, through the dining room there, beyond into what would have been the woman's room and then beyond another lobby through to the other little living room that would have been one, one, one after Linky. These quite small, space. this little lobby here, um, I'm going to show you a reverse view of that between that outside terrace and what is the dining room here. And these sort of fittings in between as you, it's a transitional space between small rooms that I think is quite subtle. Um, there it is uh, with its Miesian furniture. It's a, a glazed case set in for the thick wall, uh, the display that the open terrace beyond, and you can imagine those people socializing um, on the outside. Just to, uh, that's a more current view, uh, more orthodox photo of that relationship. Um, that's the, re the reception room again. So it, it's echoing the same things that happened in the Langer House, which you think set back. And again, the curtains and the light and how the art and the art fittings uh, uh, and the furniture were all, all, all of a piece. Now they have, when they have these various artists and they, they go into these spaces. Um, the dining room here again, which is again, not like the Langer one, it repeats again, um, that terrace again, a more, gosh, more detail of that, round the outside. Um, the, uh, the way the podium shifts off again into the bigger garden. So the, the gathering of you saw them gathered together on that terrace there would have spread out onto this lawn part. Um, it is a reverse view of that coming down from that terrace to the transition to the landscape outside. A darker view of the same thing, another view of the same thing. Um, the garage court in the Estes house, the, the garage, the parking is actually at right angles tucked in where that white there's a sculpture in it. Uh, but that's the reverse bit of the terrace. Oh, that, that's, that's if you drive in, that's where you park it in. But an outside space, but not such a big, big internal one. Um, the entrance on the other side. Um, now they're used as galleries. Um, uh, these are the sorts of artists who have um, had to deal with this as a place to exhibit. And quite a number of them, if you're going to go back Klaus Oldenburg, um, he, I, I'm not showing you pictures of things done in it, but if you know the sort of work and the scale he works at, um, when well, he worked at very different, at different scales, but of objects that he would make out of different materials, you can imagine them in some of those spaces. Daniel Buren was there. What he did was, I think he filled in all the, all the openings between those spaces, and then he manufactured a wallpaper exactly the same as the brickwork, so he destroyed all the openings that there were at all. Um, uh, uh, Richard Long and Richard Sarah, you know, the quite large things that they do, and Christo, their wrapper uppers of things. Those sort of artists have, have now have a dialogue with these buildings. They go on. Um, I'm going to go back to the man who did the restoration now and, and go into the bit of, the, of how it was constructed and how he dealt with some of the problems. Schäden, das begann natürlich das, was offensichtlich war an den Wänden, wo die Steine aus den Wänden fielen, die Mauern, die von oben zerrottet waren, entfugt waren, durchmoost waren. Es gab Situationen, wo Stahlkonstruktionen natürlich kaputt waren und Stahlkonstruktionen regelrecht zerrostet waren. Das konnte man von außen sehen. Wir haben eine spezielle Stütze beispielsweise analysiert, die aus sieben Profilen zusammengesetzt war, weil der Gestaltungswille von Herrn Mies natürlich ein spezieller so klar und sauber war. Und dieses aus sieben Profilen zusammengesetzte Stützen Element war von 12 mm auf null durchgerostet. Nicht? Das betraf also das Thema Dach, das Thema Fassade, das Thema Fenster, das Thema Konstruktion vor allen Dingen. Das war auch eines der Schwierigkeiten, die Konstruktion zu untersuchen, was wir natürlich am Anfang nicht konnten. Nicht? Das ist ja inzwischen schon zwölf Jahre her die ersten Untersuchungen. Aber da fiel es ein während des musealen Betriebes. 
Um, and this is the sort of thing that he was dealing with. There, there's the, for, that's a section through a, a, the head of a window where one of those blinds would have gone up. And the lower bit is the sort of state they got into because of building with the sort of steel and the protection it had at that time with brickwork of, of this sort and the problems that he had to solve. Um, this is a typical section through either of those houses. And you can see there the thick walls, the difference between the, the load bearing brickwork and the facing brickwork being tongued in. And you can see the amount of steel and steel bracing in the, even those quite small spaces and the steel beams within the floors to tie all this lot um, together. Um, that's one of the steelwork drawings of the same thing. Again, for the floors, of, 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 that's holding the whole thing up and that brickwork was sort of built um, round that. Um, uh, the sort of steel work, again, a large amount of riveting at that time with, with plates together. Um, the steel technologies moved on no end. Um, and I think in the 1940s, uh, Mies, I mean, the experience of having done this sort of thing worked this way. Um, uh, he learned a lot. Um, uh, basement walls, how things are put together. Um, that's a detail of where, if these windows had been slid down into the basement. Um, Eric Mendelssohn had, al had already done actually windows that slid down into his own house like this. It was perfectly technical to do. I think it was just probably the money why they didn't do it here. Um, they did do it in the Tugendhat house to, to great effect. Um, that's just, that, that, again, they, uh, th this is a working detail from that one of, of the cell of one of those windows that would have, would have, would have slid down based on Eric Mendelssohn's one. Um, just a repeat of, of, of how that stuff you did to go. How all the stuff fitted together. Um, you see how, how they, they drew that. And I think this is the last one I'm going to show. There's, there's, there's the roller blinds going up into their, 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 their um, place um, uh, 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 above, the, um, above, above the windows. Um, I think that's where I'm going to finish talking about the two houses. Um, I don't know whether anybody saw it, but uh, David Chipperfield was on the television about a fortnight ago, actually, talking about. Uh, Mies and his work on the um, the Stavskale in Berlin, the, you know, the last building that Mies did, um, and about the problems he had with keeping that as Miesian as you could. That was basically a building with a podium, four columns, and a roof, um, uh, and it was an art gallery. Um, and and, and, and he, he quite clearly said that's what it was about, and that's what Mies was about, um, and he, he got to a point in doing that um, with buildings, uh, mainly because he was a maker and he went through all this stuff. Um, I'm going to digress a bit. I spoke at the beginning um, about Mrs. Rezor and uh, the, uh, the house that he's got in 38, uh, and Mies uh, staying in the University Club on Fifth Avenue in, in, in New York, um, which is um, uh, I wanted to quickly go to one point. I think we have enough time, don't we? Plenty of time. Plenty of time, yes, okay. Um, uh, to talk a bit about the Seagram building in, in relation to Mies and in relation to his experiences before he got to doing this. I mean, the, 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 the way we in Britain know the Seagram building is the photo on the left here. Um, it's not quite like that now. In, the, the, in this photo, you've got the lever building to the right on one side. And the thing with two prongs on top is the Waldorf Astoria. But everything, they're there, but everything else here is surrounded by buildings that go up to the height of the Seagram building, all, all round it. Um, round side, uh, Norman Foster's done a building up the back here that goes up and everything around here is up to this sort of height. So the reality of the Seagram building is its space in front. And it, it's very often talked about in terms of that this space was, you know, on Fifth, on, on, sorry, on Park Avenue, where it faces, uh, nobody had stepped a building back and had a space in front. Um, and I wanted to talk about that. I mean, it, it's sort of bit, uh, the fact that it just did that and the way it's shown in this photo uh, was to make the entrance this way in, um, and, and you could see the elevation going up. Um, but there were some other things going on. The picture on the right here is Palladio's Theatre in Vicenza. Um, that he did in an urban context where he had to fit a, a theatre uh, 
which is, this is the auditorium part, and this is the stage part, which is in a building, sort of next door to the other building, uh, and how he manipulated an apse that was in this building on the axis of the theatrical experience, so that you had you could have an extraordinary depth of perspective to the back, um, which uh, looks like that in that in, in, in that, that, that photo. Um, in the what, what you've got on the right there is Palladio in Vicenza with a view in perspective. Um, uh, the bottom here, I'm going to jump on to a plan of the, of, of the Segan building. This is on it, it's, it's footprint, okay? And you have, it, it's on a, a whole block on the, on the Park Avenue side, which is, come back arrows, I need to point at things here. The right, oh, got it, right, okay. Park Avenue and the main entrance is on this side here. And the plinth that forms the beginning of the Seagram building is two steps up. And then it's a flat plane all the way back. The part you can see with the square hatching on it is all in the same plane all the way back. But on either side of it, the roads, the, in this way, fall away and drop away. So to get to the upper level here at this point from this street, you have a bigger flight of steps, not just two, you get quite a few. And similarly on this side, the road that runs down here, you have a flight of steps that go up there. So there's a, a fall along there. And along this edge, he did this marvelous um, uh, uh, marble um, thing you sit on, a lump, lump of it down the side. So you can't fall over the edge because it's very wide, but you can sit on the top of it and you're above the street next door. The forecourt, it just has two pools either side there. The tower itself follows the line of these columns uh, back to um, this point. It doesn't go beyond that, that line there. Uh, and at an upper level, it steps back in the middle so that it, in the photo you'd originally seen, it looks thinner from the, from the view the other way. In the middle of that, you get these banks of lifts, uh, which are surrounded by stone and the story height of the, of the lobby is double, double height. To the rear, there is another second. It goes into this annex at the back, which is a restaurant at the back with steps up and, and on, the, on the steps back, on the steps back here, uh, for many years, there was a, a lovely Picasso, sort of neoclassical type Picasso from the 1920s, very big picture there at the top of those steps on the axis that through between these two lift lobbies, you had a view that went out through and didn't stop there at the two steps. The view, because like in Palladio's theater, from this point of view, if you're on the stage in it, is restricted by the uh, lift, lifts there. Uh, your view goes straight over the road to the Rackets Club, which is a McKim, Mead and White building on the other side and occupies the frontage, bang opposite the Seagram building. So the Rackets Club, uh, in 1916, it, it, it's McKim, Mead and White. It's not them at their best. They are, they were all dead by then, actually, the partners. But, but it was done in a, in a sort of Palladium style. In the middle part of it has three bays that open up. Uh, and you get this perspective. I think if you're looking this way, you see nothing but that um, neoclassical facade on the other side. And, 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 and when you're this way, you, you, you get shown your lovely, 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 lovely Picasso. And just going back a step, that's, that's the, you can't see the Picasso there, but it's in that gap on the side. It's, it's here up those steps. You can see the solidity of the stonework there. This is a sideways view of what we were looking at before in that lobby. So you can see the height and you can see the materiality of the way the lift uh, rooms are encased in, in stone. And when you're moving as a pedestrian, you, you, you move under. Um, uh, and that's the view back to the Rackets Club. Um, and this is, this is only one block away from the university club when Mies was there uh, for six weeks uh, working on this damned house that never got built out in the middle of spanning a river. Um, and he would have been familiar with this area. And, and at that time, he would have been familiar with the Rackets Club. And when he came to do the Seagram building, I think uh, uh, American Beaux-Arts is, is not very well known over here, but it, some of it is extremely vigorous. This is not particularly vigorous, but the university club itself uh, as, as, as a Beaux-Arts building it has extraordinary spaces and it's done. And, it, and he, would, he would have, being a Schinkel man, he'd have picked up on that. And I'm suggesting he picked up on this and this, this thing was a perspective 
um, is, 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 is really one of the beautiful things about the Seagram building uh, as, it, as, it lives, as it lives today. Um, so that's an up view from higher up the uh, Seagram building. You get the, the, the Brackets Club, obviously. Um, and and I've, just, I've just got a text at the end, which is Schinkel, which is what these goes back to, about um, uh, to build is to join with different materials into a whole comprise for a definite purpose. Uh, and, 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 and architect's purposes, especially with, with Mies, his purposes are really, they, they really go right back in, in, into history. He, he was a modern architect, but his knowledge of, of things comes through, I mean, as David Chibble was saying, having, him having lived with the, the art gallery in Berlin, you, you, you get to get to these points, I think, with, with his buildings. Um, and I think that's about what I want to say, if you want to do that. I think that's about the end of it. Um, Yes, he says it's a spiritual act as well as a, okay, but uh, it's aesthetic, really. Yeah, yeah we'll end there. Thank you. For that, the, okay. Thank you. Lovely slides. Beautiful talk. Are you happy that we open up a discussion on the topic and perhaps me in general? Yes, let me, yes. Uh, Do you, but, could I start uh, maybe just by asking your opinion about the... Esther's and Langer Hoysen. Do you think that Mies actually enjoyed working on them, having been told that he could forget about his extreme clarity and simplicity, yeah. you know, with the no glass, please? Um, well, he at the same time, I mean, he, it, 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 this was a particularly fruitful period for him between 1927, 1920, 20, 1930. I mean, he was, he was teaching the Bauhaus, right? He was running the Bauhaus. Um, uh, he was doing the Turkentat House, Barcelona Pavilion. I mean, those famous buildings where he really got got, got going. Um, he was working on those. I think uh, I, I, clearly when he said he had trouble. I mean, I, I, the fact that Hermann Langer was was so into the same things that he was into. I mean, that's what I was trying to stress here was that he, he, he before he'd known what Theo van Dersberg was up to with the still, uh, and, and one of the sad things really was the early death of Van der Beek. You know, he, he was quite young when he died in 1932. He'd done one piece of architecture, but the, if, if he'd gone on, he was, he was moving in the direction of architecture, right? Um, uh, as, as opposed to art. Um, for people like Hermann Langer and for Mies in the 1920s, all these things were mixed up. So their discussions when they talk about trouble uh, um, um, would have been within the framework of, of an aesthetic movement. That, that, that they were, were really fascinated by. He'd, he'd recently been involved in collaborating in uh, Weissenhof. Yes, and yes. He'd obviously rubbed shoulders with others. <laughs> More than shoulders, yes, um, yes, yes, they were all I mean, together. Do you think, I think, I don't know, the, I think that the, the building he did at, uh, at Stuttgart predated just about yeah, the, the 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 yes the, the, their apartments so, there. they're very they're, they're very simple they are very simple, simple yeah. flexible and very well designed apartments. do you think he brought some of that um planning and um you know the the uh the detail to the, this project or do you think that i mean he he's going slightly against um some of the fashionable ideas that were being expressed yes. at Yes, it, it wasn't a white a white rendered building. It, it wasn't, wasn't the right rendered. No, no, no. no. Um, but I mean, but he never did a white rendered. Well, there well, you go. Africana Strauss is, which was low cost, cheap housing. I mean, I, I think you mentioned at one point how modern these look. You know, you could open a an architectural magazine and see these almost as a finished product right now in terms of detailing and uh, aesthetic. Um, but I, I suggest you go to go to Kreufeld. It's not very far from Düsseldorf and can have a look. <laughs> I, I think I'd like to actually. But do you think that because they're both art galleries now, that has come about because they've outlived their usefulness as houses, or because they have such a a kind of reputation, or they have a a cachet that they now are they they, they were ideal to, for adaptation as art, uh, art galleries. I, I think it's simpler than that. that we designed for displaying art all right it, it's not the sort yeah. of art that people produce these yeah. days but nevertheless it, it was art it was a person having uh, having a relationship with yeah. uh, with individual paintings or sculptures 
uh, in a space. Right. Uh, uh, and the spaces were designed for that to happen. And, that, and that, what's quite interesting is, I mean, the artists now are completely different, but 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 you can go then, um, it, they, they, they've, they've engaged with it, all those different artists. Um, uh, and then there are lots of other places they yeah, no, exhibit. Right, they're, 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 yeah. they're, they're, they're well-known, famous, well-accepted um, artists. It, 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 they were art houses to start with, you know, they, they, could, they could take it. I, I'd ask our Zoom audience if they've got any comments to make or if there's anything that they'd like to um, enlarge on. But also, our live audience, have you guys got anything that you'd like to ask Philip about these particular houses? Um, it's maybe illustrates a little bit about, you know, was it an enjoyable process for me? So I, I went to visit these um, seven or eight years ago. And in actual fact, the reason that I went was not particularly to see these, but to see the mock-up of the golf club, which they built, which, and, and I think what that illustrated was that there were actually a whole, a portfolio of projects for, I guess, this group of silk industry mm -hmm. people and, and he, you know that's so it covers probably more than just the, the period of time of these houses actually you know there were repeat commissions and so I expect that he you know must have got over whatever <laughs> a frustrations he might have had um about doing it but I mean just to, you know to add the the mock-up was there for about three or four weeks built it it was a, an unbuilt project and they built it out of plywood mm -hmm. and timber sections on the original site. And it was the most profound thing, you know, probably like um, when people went to, you know, had known the Barcelona Pavilion from black and white photographs in the twenties, and then it got rebuilt and, uh, and you see it in color. Yes. And <laughs> it, and, and it, it, you know, it was amazingly powerful for something that was just mocked up in wood and plywood in the, on a muddy field. Absolutely. You saw it, did you? Yeah. Yes. It was Robert um, Dam, wasn't it, who, and Dan, yeah. who, 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 who put it up? I mean, I, I didn't see it, but it was... Um, yes, there were a series of buildings that he did for them as a factory as well. Um, and, and exhibition work for, this, for the children, sort of, which uh, Lily Rife was involved in a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, steel is a kind of material that is... Um, strangely not, not well liked really by the general public for architectural projects it seemed I suppose more in, in as a, an engineering material rather than architectonic or structural in, um, in buildings. Do you think that um, uh, the, as a result of, of the, you know, the way these um, aesthetic moved that these, buildings were destined to be neglected or overlooked? Um, well, when he, you, you're thinking, when, when, he, when he actually got, when he ceased being an academic and, and started build, designing and building in Chicago, the, the, the buildings there, which were steel frame with brick infill panel and had this amazing detailing that got people like the Smithsons very excited yeah. when you went around corners and things. Um, uh, in fact, I think if you if if you looked in the in the buildings in the Ruhr Valley, that the, 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 the steel frames with brick infill was a very common form of doing a, a simple, basic industrial building yes. in Germany, um, uh, which is not like these houses. I mean, the, the, you saw the frame and you filled it in with brick, and that was really really nice and simple. Um, uh, so uh, he had that sort of knowledge. I think the experience here of wrestling. I mean, it must have been wrestling with the bricklayers and the steel workers on site uh, got him to the point where he realized that the way they did the factories in the Rural Valley was um, perhaps, you know, you, you, steel was steel and brick was brick. And, and um, uh, you could, you, he could achieve the ends that he was after, which after all was this, this, this marvelous sort of calm simplicity that you yes. get with the IIT buildings. And the beautiful, if you, if you did a brick, did, did with a brick what a brick can do in sort of Carnian terms, and you did what steel could do with the steel, um, your buildings would come up beautiful, and they did. So you, the sections that you showed denoted a kind of, 
suggests a very thick wall. Yes. So um, are we looking at um, the and the external in English bond being tied into? I, I'm sorry, I missed what the material was behind. Is that more? Is that a more a common brick? Uh, I think I think there was yes there was a, I had a photo of, of the, the 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 bits you didn't see the the brickwork there right. was, was was a lot rougher, um, but I mean looking at this section here you know where you've got the English bond on the outsides so you've got the headers and every other course is going the opposite direction yeah. right uh, how how you bond that into bricks that are funny sizes behind that um, uh, is, is a challenge isn't it it is yeah it is it is. Those those are original architects' drawings. Those yes, those are from the the the, the um, uh, Museum of Modern Art in in, in um, New York uh, produced catalogues of the drawings that uh, that they got uh, through Lily Wright, I think originally. And he was forty one when when he started these, wasn't he? So, do you think mm. that um, he'd got a lot? He felt he got a lot of catching up to do by that stage, in terms of. Uh, you know, creating a well, port was, portfolio. But he, I mean, he was doing the, the Barcelona Pavilion and the Tanga House true, at true, that same age. True, so it's not, it's not yes, not, not, not to be scoffed at. No, no, I, I, the, the, I, mean, I, I, I think there was a, a process of learning in doing these that, that uh, and that they, the, 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 the character you do eventually get with these buildings, although they're now re sort of reconstructed and done, um, uh, is, 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 is fairly unique. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, we have some uh, yeah. some comments from from our Zoom audience. Uh, I don't know if you can see these, Philip. I'll read no. them out to you. So uh, Keith Morrissey oh, yeah. asks, <clears throat> "How similar do you feel these two buildings are to the Lemke House in Berlin, which is smaller, but is now also an art, oh, sorry, which is smaller but is also now a small art gallery? Mm -hmm. Did he take?" ideas from the two Krefeld houses to the Lemke house. What do you think? Um, yes, the Lemke house is, is a single story patio house, isn't it? Uh, and, and I think I showed briefly that, that he and Hilbersheimer um, were really fascinated by patio houses. In other words, L-shaped L houses. Uh, and I think the Lemke is one of those. Um, uh, I think it's a lot simpler. I don't think the walls are nearly as thick. Uh, and, and, and the brickwork is much more conventional, I think. Right, um, right. So um, uh, I, think that the, I think the budgets were different, different quite honestly. The, the Lemke house was done fairly basically cheaply for somebody, whereas this was a house for an extremely wealthy, important client, you know, the man who ran the, the silk industry in, in, in Germany. Yes. Uh, um, uh, he had a big budget. You, you, the, the dimensions for the room heights and the sizes of the, the whole concept was on a on a grand bourgeois scale, you know. Right, right. Uh, that, that's the difference. That sort of leads into the next question. Suzanne Knoll has asked whether you can expand on the family members' opinions about living in these houses. She says she's especially intrigued about how the woman's room and the shared room were used. I mean, are we looking at boudoir, sort of boudoir-esque? I, I don't, I think so. I, they were quite large families. They had several children each. And on oh. some of the notations of what rooms were for, one, I think it's in the Esther's house, that, that what is the small one is, is, is the nursery in the, oh, in the right. other one. Yeah, yes, um, uh, I think in, in terms of, of uh, I described because the drawings by Lily Reich of 1942 during the war, just before um, Langer died, um, uh, clearly the spaces were being used differently. And I think probably earlier on when, when they were important people and clearly had to socialize on quite a large scale and have dinner parties and people and stuff like that in, the, 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 having those rooms like that gave them flexibility to have a lot of different uses, I think. Okay, uh, okay. Any more questions? Yes. Son? Okay. Uh, I think we're probably just about there then. Um, just before I summarize and, I'll, and thank Philip, I'd, I'd just like to mention some of the future events that we've got. We've got a, a walk lined up for Saturday. So one of our members, James Dunnett, is leading uh, a tour in Finsbury, which 
I think promises to be very exciting and quite revealing. And it's an area that he knows intimately. And I um, think we're also- Can I say to something that what, what James is particularly keen on is, is uh, Ludwig- um, Oh yeah, of course. Ludwig, yeah, Frank, yeah. Who was a German architect of this period, I think a Rome scholar as well, um, who, who came and worked with the Betkin. Right. So there's a German connection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're gonna see on that wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In Finsbury. So please, if anyone here or in our Zoom audience is interested in coming on that talk, we've already got quite a few registrations, but you need to get a wiggle on and get yourselves registered. And then in July, we are having, as in preparation for our Milan study tour, which is coming up uh, in the late summer, we are having a talk on Tirani and also at, at a date yet to be set, a general overview of Italian rationalism. So we'd like to welcome, that is probably going to be just by Zoom, but the Tirani talk is going to be live here in the gallery. So we'd like to welcome anyone who, um, who's interested in that to those events. Philip, well, as well. usual, thank you very much indeed for an absolutely fascinating talk. The detail was all there. The um, uh, the kind of the experience was there, and, and also your photographs are beautiful. I love the way that you combine individual shots into uh, an overview, uh, and um, the um, the enlivened obviously by the uh, the live recordings or the recorded the family recordings and the architects recordings, which um, I think is something we might try and um, develop in future talks. However, thank you very much indeed. And uh, if you, the live audience and the Zoom audience, if you would like to silence yourself, could give some appreciation to Philip for his efforts tonight. Thank you. Thank you, so I'm now gonna close the event. Thank you very much for coming.